In the episode titled, The Forgotten Men and Women of Vermont, I explored the political concept of the forgotten man. This episode was inspired by historian Amity Shale's 2008 book titled, The Forgotten Man, A New History of the Great Depression. In this book, she presents a revised understanding of the Great Depression, most notably arguing that the depression following the 1929 stock market crash became great and lasted for over a decade because of misguided government intervention. Shales criticizes Republican President Herbert Hoover, but in particular she blames his Democratic Party successor, FDR, for implementing erratic policies that created economic uncertainty. FDR, Shales argues, vilified the business community and created new interest groups like union workers and farmers pitting Americans against one another. FDR is famous for assuring the American people that they had nothing to fear but fear itself. He is also known for another famous phrase, bold and persistent experimentation. Today, using an example in the field of healthcare, we will see how the state of Vermont continues FDR's tradition of bold and persistent experimentation similarly causing economic uncertainty and shackling the hands of commerce. In October 2016, with just a few months left in office, Democrat Governor Peter Shumlin brokered a deal with the outgoing Obama administration. The state of Vermont entered an agreement with the federal government to experiment with a new means of health care financing called an all-payer model. Since 2017, an Accountable Care Organization, or ACO, called OneCare Vermont has facilitated this new payment delivery system under oversight from the Green Mountain Care Board and the Department of Vermont Health Access, or DEVA. An Accountable Care Organization, or ACO, is a revised or updated form of an HMO. An HMO, or Health Maintenance Organization, consists of doctors and healthcare providers that provides or arranges managed care for the individuals within that group. In Vermont, we have a statewide ACO called One Care Vermont, which is a private entity and it is in charge of facilitating this new all-payer model, which is an alternative payment system. At the heart of the all-payer model is a fundamental ideological shift. The model wants to move away from the traditional fee-for-service reimbursement for doctors, which means when you go and see a doctor, the doctor gets reimbursed for providing the particular service. So this model wants to move away from that into a global budget, which basically means that hospitals and physician groups who participate in this experiment will receive a fixed monthly amount and they need to cover the services for their patients within that predetermined budget. Its objective is to bring down healthcare costs and improve the quality of and access to health care in Vermont. One Care is supposed to produce significant health care cost savings. However, the ACO has not reduced Vermont's health care spending. Not only has the ACO not brought down health care costs, it also keeps exceeding its budget as its administrative costs keep rising astronomically. The Green Mountain Care Board, or GMCB, consists of five appointed members, none of whom have any health care background, by the way. These members are charged with conducting oversight over OneCare Vermont. As the executive director of a health policy nonprofit called Vermonters for Healthcare Freedom, I led an investigation into OneCare Vermont that revealed many disturbing findings. Problem number one, the ACO experiences pervasive and systemic problems with the health information technology that it uses. So in the 2019 budget, OneCare requested $4.3 million 
for health information technology and about $5.6 million for care coordination. And this was up by about $6 million from 2018. But here's the problem. Although the ACO requested for $6 million more from what it used in 2018 in order to conduct its care coordination and technology initiatives, there are no measurable and independently verified results for these programs. I looked at the budget presentations that OneCare gave to the Green Mountain Care Board and the correspondence between OneCare and GMCB, but nowhere are any actual outcomes specified. Moreover, the clinical and insurance claims data collection and management by the ACO demonstrates profound operational flaws. For example, the ACO uses health insurance claims that have a three-month data delay. If you have a 90-day look back, isn't that going to prevent doctors from developing real-time actionable healthcare solutions that would allow patients to meet their health goals? Let me simplify it. If the data is not up to date, then the doctor is not getting a real-time picture of what the patient's health is, and therefore it inhibits his or her ability to create solutions and to create a health care regimen that would best serve the patient. Problem number two, the analytics utilization by the ACO is highly questionable. OneCare has developed two analytic tools called Care Navigator and Workbench One, which is supposed to help healthcare providers across the state from easily accessing patient records and then coming up with a healthcare schedule, a regimen, that serves the patient's needs. What we found was that OneCare claims it has trained 500 users, whether they're doctors or nurses or social workers, 500 individuals across the state have been trained to use Care Navigator analytic platform. However, there are absolutely no records to show how many times the trained users actually use these programs. Vermonters for Healthcare Freedom submitted Freedom of Information Act requests, FOIA requests, to the Green Mountain Care Board asking for detailed user reports, but apparently these reports don't exist. So questions such as, what are the number of unique users? How many times did each train user log in? How long did each user stay online? None of this information is available, and so we can't assess the true utilization of these tools for which OneCare requested millions of dollars in their 2019 budget. Isn't it surprising, though, that there's no information or any records available demonstrating how OneCare is using its analytics or what the outcomes of their various programs are? Why does the state government accept OneCare's representation about its goals. So OneCare says, okay, we did this, we did that, and that's it. Neither the Green Mountain Care Board nor any agency of the state government feels it necessary to independently verify the claims made by this private organization. Without the specific information, people of Vermont have no means of determining whether the care coordinators are actually utilizing the analytics in any consistent manner. We have no way of understanding whether the programs are actually delivering the outcomes that OneCare claims. Problem number three, invalid clinical data. Vermont Information Technology Leaders, or VITAL, manages OneCare's health information exchange, which consists of the patient's records and health insurance claims. Fortunately for our investigation, VITAL CEO Mike Smith provided the smoking gun. He shared an analysis that compared patient records as collected by VITAL and patient records as collected by the University of Vermont Medical Center. And the cases that it specifically looked at was essential hypertension, high blood pressure, and diabetes in 2017. Now there should be a 100% match between the two because they are the same patients. However, <laughs> When it came to diabetes, VITAL and University of Vermont patient records data had a complete match only 
in 46% cases and 41% cases for hypertension. Oh, but there's more bad news. A really appalling finding was the absence of blood pressure readings in the vital database for about 40% cases of hypertension. Take that in for a second. In 40% patient records where the patient is suffering from hypertension, there are no blood pressure readings. So when the care coordinator, whether it's the nurse or the doctor, logs in to the analytic platform provided by One Care, what are they seeing? How are they helping the patient when they don't have access to his blood pressure readings? I mean, here's a patient suffering from hypertension, but you don't know his blood pressure readings? Hmm. Vitals inaccurate and incomplete database raises pressing concerns about the clinical care and public health interventions supposedly implemented by the ACO. Consider the implications for Vermont patients and community members. These three profound problems regarding data management, software, analytical tools, the quality of the clinical data and insurance claims data really call into question OneCare's ability to facilitate seamless technology-driven care coordination as they claim across the state of Vermont. Why do we not have any answers? When we question the bold and persistent experiments of our state government, instead of trying to hold One Care Vermont accountable last year, Green Mountain Care Board member Robin Lunch argued that the usability, connectivity, and quality of data used by One Care Vermont lie beyond the state's control. She said, quote, if the technology does not improve, there is nothing that the state government or vital can do about it, end quote. She also added that Green Mountain Care Board should not be held accountable for the lack of technological success because they are on the, quote, right track. So why does Lunch contend that the public should absolve One Care and Vital for unreliable data and for poor health information technology performance? Why are Vermont taxpayers expected to throw good money after bad on a multi-million dollar analytics project that cannot navigate the technology that lies at its heart? In its 2019 budget, One Care Vermont requested $16 million for operating costs, which was up from about $12.5 million in 2018. The increased amount included $3.4 million to integrate an organization called Rise Vermont into its operations. So the additional funds were requested to pay for four full-time Rise Vermont staff and two staff for mental health efforts. What are the job descriptions, qualifications, salary and benefits packages for OneCare's new employees? And what exactly is Rise Vermont doing? We reached out to its executive director, Marissa Parisi, but she refused to speak to us, citing a busy schedule, and she ignored my follow-up communications. Why? Because I asked for specific information quantifying the results of the various primary prevention programs that her organization champions. So Rise Vermont, for example, is interested in reducing adult obesity. I asked her, how have Rise Vermont's efforts specifically reduced adult obesity? What is the methodology used to collect the data needed to track these outcomes? No answer. While I'm not surprised by this pattern of absent or inadequate transparency, this seems to be the trend with One Care and its affiliates. But it should give Vermonters a lot of cause for concern. It is interesting to note that the Office of the Healthcare Advocate has spoken out against One Care and publicly stated that the ACO has not supplied the Green Mountain Care Board with sufficient information about its quality measures and financial performance results in a manner that would enable, quote, meaningful oversight. When it comes to Vermont Health Connect, the state's health insurance exchange, the Office of the Healthcare Advocate has usually sided with protecting the exchange serving ideology and not the individual. But surprisingly, they criticized One Care publicly. And in recent months, the state auditor, Doug Hoffer, has said that he will use his office 
to investigate OneCare Vermont and even carry out an audit. So let's see what happens on that front. I believe that the Green Mountain Care Board should have postponed voting on OneCare's budget until the organization's leadership offered candid and comprehensive responses to the many unanswered questions raised by public advocates. Unfortunately, Robin Lunge and her colleagues don't seem interested in conducting oversight and are more invested in championing for the success of this experimental model. I am surprised, however, that state legislators on the Republican side did not demand that the ACO provide transparency and disclose reports that quantified its analytics, the outcomes of its programs, or at least admit that it wasn't tracking any of them. I guess there's always next year. No doubt this is a complicated subject. And One Care Vermont does not make anything easy. If you look at their budget reports and their agenda items, everything is so convoluted in a very intentional way, invoking the anti-transparent manner with which Jonathan Gruber and his associates crafted Obamacare. But a lack of understanding seldom prevents one from sharing his opinion. Let's consider an editorial written by Emerson Lynn, the editor-in-chief of the St. Albans Messenger. The piece is titled, The Green Mountain Care Board Needs to Be One Care's Defender. Here I am discussing the editorial on the Common Sense radio show with Bill Sayre. And in this op-ed, he says that the only way to reduce health care costs is to reduce usage. Now, I like this quote because it reminds me of a maxim that I heard time and again while I was at med school, and that is, what the mind doesn't know, the eyes don't see. They stressed this to the, to the students while, they were, while we were training to explain that if you don't understand the underlying problem, whatever the pathology is, if you don't understand that, you will not be able to diagnose it correctly and find a proper solution. What you'll end up doing is treating the symptoms, which will keep coming back again and again. So, in his op-ed, Emerson Lin is advocating for the rationing of health care without saying so and perhaps without even realizing it. That is plenty pernicious. However, he's also advocating that the Green Mountain Care Board should champion for one care instead of providing oversight, an objective with which it is entrusted by Vermont law. Emerson Lin allegedly falls more on the right of the political spectrum, which goes to show that the compulsion for bold and persistent experimentation runs deep in the Green Mountain State. And that concludes today's wonky episode. Write to me at megpodcast at gmail.com. You can listen to the podcast on soundcloud.com forward slash writing VT. You can also reach me on my Facebook page, Dialogues with Meg Hansen. New podcast episodes every Tuesday and Thursday. I'm Meg Hansen, and you've been listening to Writing What's Left.